Hello and good morning everyone and thank you for joining our Barracuda webinar today that is focusing on security solutions for Microsoft Azure. Uh, so we're joined here by Chris Hill and Farah Abaud from Barracuda who will be going through the webinar with you. Thank you Amy. Are you seeing my screen okay? Yes, perfect. Perfect, okay. So good morning everyone. Um, Thank you for joining us today to uh, step through this uh, Barracuda Bytes Microsoft um, uh, webinar. We're going to uh, cover a few things um, and a nice long title there in the middle um, to, to give you an idea of the things that we'd like to go through. A little bit different to normal in terms of if this is not a, a product presentation or going through data sheets, etc. We uh, did a uh, commissioned a report of which I'll touch on in a minute. And this is really to walk through the findings of that uh, with the sole goal of helping you be prepared for your journey to the cloud. We wanna make sure you're secure when you go to the cloud. And there's some startling statistics in this webinar, but uh, rest assured, the cloud is a good thing and we absolutely endorse that journey to the cloud. We just wanna make sure you do it um, uh, correctly and securely. So we'll, we'll take a, a stab at, at those uh, results as we walk all the way through this. So there's me down in the bottom left there, um, looking very dapper, um, and um, uh, my able colleague there, Farah Abaud, um, she will be speaking towards the end of this presentation. Um, I'm the Director of Business Development for Europe, Middle East and Africa here at, at Barracuda, and have been so focused solely on the cloud and um, been doing a lot of work with Microsoft and Bytes here. So um, this will all tie nicely with their messaging. And also you'll see a URL there just to the right of Farah's uh, name. Now feel free to take a copy of that. Um, you'll see that a couple of times through the presentation and it is also at the end. Um, that um, will take you to a page that has all of the, the report uh, in more detail that I'm going to touch on today, plus a, a, a video, I think, and, a, and an infographic. So basically a lot of the, the detail that came from this report, uh, an executive white summary as well, that helps you understand how we um, put this together and how we're helping customers on their journey. So feel free to take a copy of that. And like I say, you will see that further through the presentation. So um, here's a bit of background. So, so what we did as, as Barracuda, um, you know, we, we have really stapled our flag to the master of cloud and making sure everyone is protected on their journey. And we were interested in getting some real feedback from uh, existing public cloud customers around the world. Um, we went out to a company called Vance and Bourne and, and commissioned a report through them. So an independent re report uh, globally, it went out to 1,300 uh, end users, uh, IT decision makers, uh, to, to garnish their experiences and expectations and uh, it, what, what's been going on in their world in the cloud. Now, for the purpose of this webinar of taking out the, the EMEA chunk, the European chunk um, for uh, this is more relevant for us, obviously. And of that, there were 550 uh, end users within that uh, report. Uh, all very recent. So this survey was conducted just a couple months ago. And uh, what was reassuring for Barracuda and for Vance and Bourne was the results coming in were, uh, uh, they were in, in tone, they kept in theme with previous reports and, and questions. So there wasn't anything wildly off here uh, and you could see that the progression and evolution of, of cloud so so very healthy there um, not tiny companies either so uh, a decent chunk 500 to 10,000 employees as you can see there uh, all currently using public cloud uh, infrastructure as a service so a very uh, good cross-section for a report and then the report it was around 35, 40 questions, if I remember rightly, and, and, and it was all based around five focus areas, which was that the cloud infrastructure, um, challenges, benefits of the cloud, ultimately culminating in, in public cloud security, which is where our focus is. Now, I'm sure you're aware that Microsoft have been very thoughtfully addressing the, the vertical markets and making sure that one size doesn't fit all and uh, making sure that they're working with each and every one of you in your, your sectors. And this report 
followed the same suit. So as you can see on the right hand side there, this wasn't just uh, walking into, um, I don't know, London and in, in interviewing all of the financial accounts. This was across the board, across uh, EMEA and across uh, lots of sectors there. So, so a healthy set of results that we can all, all work with. <clears throat> So I suppose it's it's probably a healthy point to to set the scene. I mean, we, we all know that the the public cloud um, story. We know the adoptions on the rise. We know that uh, investment is increasing in this space, and and we've all heard about the the, the benefits uh, and greater uh, efficiencies, agility, scalabilities, cost savings. You, you know, the list goes on. But it it's, it does go on for a very good reason. However, what, what you'll find from this report is that security remains a key barrier to adoption. And, and that's what we're going to focus on today. And, and it's our goal to try and help you get past that obstacle. Um, as you can see here, the, um, uh, it, it's obviously rising quickly. 20% have already got it in their budget. And, and actually, 35% had already deployed in some way, shape, or form um, to the cloud. But the big figure there, which was which was um, you know very impressive, is you know 50% half of half of the you all will be uh, moving to the cloud within two years. So so a big big chunk from that 550 that responded in in the EMEA part. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now I know this is a UK webinar, um, but the uh, you know there are some statistics there just uh, as a point of interest there uh, throughout this in regards to. Um, countries across EMEA and, and I did that deliberately because there's a couple of startling um, statistics further on and I didn't want you to think oh it's just one country was was thinking wildly different to the others that they're, they're actually fairly similar so so you'll see that as, as we go through so the public cloud usage that this, this was an interesting one for me and you know it's tough on a webinar to talk about statistics but there there are some some interesting um, thought points, if you like, that, that jump out from, from reports like this. And, uh, you know, we found that 77% of people store their data on the cloud. Wow, you know, that's not a great shock. Uh, you know, everyone's going to realize that. But, but what really stood out for me was I didn't realize that so much sensitive data was being stored on, on the public cloud. And maybe, I, maybe I'd missed that point, but as you can see on the right there, you know, 48% uh, of employees' personal data um, you know, there's IP there, 42% of business intellectual property, and bank details. And, you know, with the general um, uh, data protection regulation just around the corner, it, it just reminds us all that we need to ensure that the cloud data is properly protected. Um, you can see the other areas, data recovery, for sure, 56%, and, and the hosting of websites, which is very popular, by the way, uh, in the cloud. That's that's Those two are up there highly, and the others you can obviously read for yourself. <clears throat> but I, I've done a, a webinar similar to this um, internally, and a couple of the questions came uh, about, so I've added them onto this slide here uh, in terms of uh, feedback from the report. I, I quite often get asked about how people license their applications on the cloud because there are different options you can uh, go to a vendor and, and buy a, a bring your own license it's called byol or there are pay as you go options and um, you know there are different versions of those and what was interesting uh, across the board and that was across the global report as well they were fairly evenly split so there wasn't one size fits all there there are choices there for a reason and it gives you that uh, opportunity to to address what's important for your business and uh, deploy in the manner that you see fit so having that choice turned out to be uh, a, a welcomed option there and <clears throat> excuse me you can obviously uh, speak to to us or anyone um, uh, with, with on Amy's team to, to help you figure out which is the best route for you. Another slightly curious statistics that came across from there was that I put down the bottom there platform misconceptions. Now, one of the, the things that came out is said one third of people believe that they could only get uh, everything from one cloud provider, which I was rather uh, surprised about. And there were quite a, a large statistic looking at investing in two. And, and I've been asked that question a couple of times now. And, and I think from my point of view, from what I've seen working closely with the cloud providers, that I, I suggest this lacks uh, an awareness of the offerings that are existing in this space. So I would certainly take time to 
to, to work with Bytes, work with your trusted advisor and make sure you understand what it is you're trying to do on that um, public cloud platform because um, they're, they're a very comprehensive uh, set of um, options there. Okay, so moving forward, um, this to me is probably the most important slide that you're going to see today in terms of um, you know, why I've even bothered to put this slide deck together. Um, because it, it's, it, to me, this, this is the whole driver for public cloud and making sure that people understand uh, their responsibility within the cloud. So there is something called a shared risk security model, which we're going to touch on shortly. Um, but as I said at the beginning, security is a blocker and it's usually because people don't understand what um, they're responsible for when they go to the cloud. And if we start on the right hand side there, uh, I just want to put down, you know, there is massive confusion, a massive confusion. So 61% of the people that responded across EMEA claim to fully understand their responsibilities. And as I mentioned earlier, that, that was fairly evenly matched across all of the countries, which is a big deal. Um, half of them believe that the cloud provider didn't offer strong protection. So, okay, so seems to be some confusion there. But if I go to the left hand side there at the top, the number one statistic, and I'm going to keep coming back to this. So you're going to hear me mention this 64% statistic several times. 64% of customers believe that if they place their data onto a public cloud platform, that the provider would secure that. 61% believe they place their applications on the platform, the provider would secure it. And 60% believed if they place their operating systems in there, again, that the public cloud provider would secure it. That is absolutely not true, completely wrong, which is incredibly scary. Um, and I think you'll, you'll, you'll agree if you um, uh, you remember things like ransomware, when that, that came out, that was, um, Really, if you uncover all of the, the messages, it comes down to machines that are not patched properly. Now, if you're putting your operating system into the cloud and believing that someone else is going to look after it, that is really quite scary. So we need to, to make sure that that, uh, that gets addressed. So that 64% figure there is something that I'm going to keep coming back to. And this basically boils down to you, you need to know who secures what. And, and you know, why is this important? Um, because a, a, attacks are real. Um, not everybody, I mean, really, when you do these kind of reports, not everybody will um, come back and tell you that they've had a cyber attack or be, been exposed to an attack because sometimes customers are, are not allowed to share that kind of information. But incredibly, we had 60% uh, admit that they had already seen an attack um, and another quarter saying they expect to see another one, which is pretty crazy, right? I mean, to have that kind of a number uh, out there when the, the when there are perfect models in place to protect against this is 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 really disturbing now at the bottom there you can see that two out of three projects stalled so that's that's not healthy for your day-to-day uh, -day business and whilst you can see that shadow it and gdpr uh, considerations are certainly regular type fears the the big ones are, are the phishing uh, you know ddos and ransomware uh, which I've just touched on. And I put two stars there because this report was actually commissioned just, a, uh, I think it was about a week before the global outbreak of, of the big one that we all saw on the news. Um, so I'd imagine that those figures um, would, would go up quite dramatically. Um, but yeah, so the, the point of this slide is really to, to make sure that, you know, th these things are, are real uh, and, you know, uh, cyber attacks uh, are not just things you see on the news. And there is an impact. Um, so down the bottom of this slide, I, I tried to, to um, piece a couple of things together in this slide here. We, we have all seen the news. So you see the negative media and you can imagine that leads to fines within, within the workplace. And customers obviously not going to be particularly happy if you're um, letting them down with something that's failing via a website, for example. But employee retention was an interesting one. I hadn't thought of that um, simply due to the um, the fact that, that the employees are not happy because their company's not working very well. So uh, a, a slight different take on the impact there. Reassuringly to hear, you know, end users are. Uh, investing in additional products there you can see 57 percent i mean 
we all buy a laptop and then we all go and buy antivirus software it just makes sense that's what you're doing here so um just make sure you know the whole point of this message here is around uh, you know what you are looking after when you go into the cloud <clears throat> and that is something that's called the shared security responsibility model and i've uh, summarized this slide here uh, with the three major cloud providers and i've done that for a reason i'll touch on that in a second but whilst the 64 percent statistic is scary that this should be your number one takeaway um, from today um, I think, as we saw from the survey, you know, the, the core problem for all of the stakeholders, you know, in a nutshell, is, is the IT buyer confusion. And, and that boils down to whose responsibility is cloud security. And again, I'm just going to keep saying, remember that 64% stat. You know, as far as I can see, it, you know, the root cause of many of these concerns is, is not really knowing who secures what. And, and we certainly saw that many organizations assume that because they're effectively outsourcing the running of their infrastructure to a third party, that that provider will take care of everything. Now, I've just obviously told you that that's simply not the case. Now, the three major cloud providers there on the left, they provide very clear guidance on this subject. Now, today, you know, I'm working with Bytes, I'm working with Microsoft, we're doing a fantastic effort here. Um, but just to make a point to show that this isn't a Microsoft Barracuda Bytes thing, I've found the wording here, I have a piece of paper in front of me here, um, for the Amazon um, shared security model. So it's just to drive home that this is a an industry message, this is not a, uh, uh, you know, just a, a one vendor message. So, so let me just take a couple of seconds to read this out to you. So this one here is stating that it, so AWS, will, will address security of the cloud, and that includes compute, some storage, database, networking, and that list goes on a little bit. And then it says, but the customer is 100% responsible for security in the cloud, and that includes data, applications, operating system, network, firewall configuration, network traffic, and that list also goes on. So basically, they protect the core you protect what goes in it and that's incredibly scary when you think about that 64 percent statistic so you know the takeaway here if you want to avoid leaving yourself open and dangerously exposed obviously to, to these attacks you need to understand this model so it, it don't don't go away from thinking that you you spent all your time protecting your on-premise environment that you don't need to protect this the cloud is a good thing and it works very well you have responsibility to to protect what you're placing in it and that uh, makes for a fantastic environment so that is the the whole point of this message here i'm just going to grab some water here one second <clears throat> so as i said at the beginning th this is not a um, a product presentation and um this is a, a kind of a crude uh, slide that i put together and it's deliberately busy um to show the type of attacks um, that, that come into a nice pretty picture of a cloud there in the middle with two of our products. So we have something called a, an NGF, which is a next generation firewall, and a WAF, which is a, a web application firewall, basically protecting workloads and websites within the cloud. And I'm sure you could add to the list of all those bad guys uh, around the, the outside, and, the, and they're, they're going to be things that you know and love from your on-premise world. And really this needs to be treated as you are extending the perimeter of your data center into the cloud and you need to obviously take care of what the attacks and exposures are within that area but it's not just that you also need to the right hand side there to consider your communication back to your data center so one of the 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 big um strong points that that barracuda and microsoft put together is when we deploy uh, when we help customers deploy workloads into the cloud, we want to make sure that you know, for hybrid environments, for, for remote users, for, for communication back to headquarters, we have a very solid communication path. And we have a lot of intelligence in that link there from traffic shaping, encryption, um, bandwidth control, et cetera, uh, going back there. So that's something that uh, w we kind of summarize as Anything you want to place in the cloud or anything you want to talk to in the cloud, that is what we deal with and uh, make sure that it's protected uh, along your journey. <clears throat> so some, some some kind of scary statistics, if you like, that I was uh, uh, touching on there. Um, 
but like I said at the beginning, the cloud is a very good thing. You know, we, we um, it's, it's always strange if you do a report and you get a statistic of 99% because you think something's gone wrong. So we, so we dived into it and, and made sure we were clear. And the question was, I, I can't remember the exact wording, but it was along the lines of, you know, have you seen a benefit from moving to the public cloud? And 99% of people responded positively. And these were some of the benefits and drivers for those. And some would probably jump to your head if you were you were asked, uh, you know, in the street, being able to expand in new areas where you don't have the budget, you know, geographically, um, uh, ge geographical locations, great. Um, even things, better customer service, I, I hadn't um, considered, but cost is an obvious one. But the one that was interesting for me was, you know, integration with, with legacy IT. And that's a, a, a great driver for uh, bringing you forward, um, uh, being able to let you go forward and, and experience the cloud. So kind of in the words of uh, uh, Crime Watch, you know, don't have nightmares, that there, there are some, obstacles but you need to make sure you're um, prepared and that's the job of ever everyone on this call to make sure that you you make that journey successfully <clears throat> the next chunk here i, I have uh, eight slides that i'm going to go through very quickly there's two per vertical here just to, and, and deliberately i'm going to go through these quite fast and i'm not going to um uh, drill down on the detail. We can absolutely spend more time afterwards um, with one of the team can come and see you and chat through this. But I, I completely endorse and uh, follow the, the route of Microsoft's vertical focus. I think it's very healthy. I've never liked the one size fits all um, approach. And within Barracuda, we do the same thing. So um, you can see some of my crude snapshotting there of, of some of our data sheets. Um, that address uh, uh, verticals as retails, healthcare, there, you know, with financial, that kind of thing. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we had um, uh, four vertical use cases that we can touch on very quickly to give you an idea of how some of our customers are deploying our equipment with agricultural, construction, <clears throat> excuse me, health and gaming. So we had a, a, um, a, a first one here that was a customer that wanted to deploy into to Azure uh, in, in different zones. And they had users from inside and outside that they need to make sure that they uh, could uh, monitor and, and log. And basically they wanted to mimic uh, an on-premise architecture. It's one of our uh, first stock designs, if you like. And we used uh, the firewalls to divide up, kind of similar to, to VLANs, um, basically separate the Azure network in a manner that you'd separate uh, on-premise. And we use the, um, the firewalls to allow access between some of the tiers and block between others. So uh, a very simple design there um, for, for the agricultural um, uh, world. We have um, one in construction, the customer going to Office 365 and wanted to make sure that remote users were all, all authenticated. And um, so what we did is we placed a, a web application firewall there as a front end to, to inspect everything. Uh, we, we could do that before they go live to make sure everything was safe. And then we can use a, a next generation firewall as a VPN tunnel back to on-premise to make sure um, everything was safe there. Uh, it's a good way to authenticate any third parties coming in remotely uh, and, and manage uh, their acceptance into the cloud from that point on. It's a very, very nice way of doing it. <clears throat> and then we have a uh, uh, remote desktop environments as well, which is uh, very popular, certainly in the cloud, uh, mimicking our old fashioned uh, DMZs. Um, we wanted to ensure uh, secure access for users, but also protect what happens once they're in for, with their outbound traffic. So you can use URL filtering, virus scanning, you know, control basically the internet for all of those uh, users. And so we have the NGs there to protect what they do outbound and also back to the uh, data center. So another uh, example of, of remote desktop um, for external users there. And lastly, gaming. Um, so you can imagine the first thing that jumps to mind is, is bandwidth. And that's absolutely one of the, the big areas that, that we need to address in, in gaming. And um, and it's, it's a hybrid uh, uh, deployment. And what we have here is, is one of the things that we specialize in with uh, uh, a next uh, a next gen firewall on premise and in the cloud, and we have our own um, protocol that we call Tina that allows 
for traffic shaping. It allows for um, uh, encryption with traffic intelligence. So you can still use the intelligent across uh, an internet link, across an express route link, all the way to and from on-premise to Azure. So a very healthy um, uh, hybrid example there. But something that we specialize in is actually controlling the traffic to and from the cloud as well. So one optimization is, is a big deal for gaming, obviously, but, but certainly for, for Barracuda and um, Microsoft. And that and kind of brings me almost to the end here. I mean, Farah's going to say a, a couple of words on, on, some, on some of our email protection as well. But I wanted to, to just touch on the relationship. Um, it is a phenomenally strong relationship. Um, we've been working very closely together since the, the inception of cloud. And one thing that we're very lucky with is we, we were able to create a solution that was engineered for the public cloud rather than just trying to shoehorn some um, on-premise technology into the cloud, which, which doesn't work. So we've been able to adapt and grow with Microsoft as they are offering more uh, functionality in, in their space, um, kind of growing up together, if you like. And that brought us together to um, actually be awarded the Partner of the Year um, for ISVs last year, which is quite a prestigious award. And so we're very proud of that. And you know that in turn has brought us together working with Bytes and, and we're spending time making sure that, uh, again, the vertically aligned message with uh, data sheets, configurations, uh, I can dig out reference stories for you. Uh, and certainly those, those ones we, we just zip through there, we can go into more detail if you think they're relevant to you. That's something we can absolutely uh, take the time to do. So one last slide just before I hand to Farah, I believe, if I remember my slide sequence correctly. And these are the, the, the two resources I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes on. So the one on the left there I mentioned at the beginning, that's the, uh, the Discover Your Cloud. So that was our internal uh, message for the, the report and going out and finding uh, all the answers and how we shape our message and make sure it is what the customers want to hear. And there's the URL for that. And you can go there and as I say, there's a there's a video there, there's an infographic. I, I think that the, the executive summary white paper is, is a very nice uh, and easy read. And it summarizes all of those statistics because there were a lot and you want to make sure you know, kill yourself with those. But there was a nice uh, overall summary. And then on the right there is something called Cloud Ready, which is something we use um, uh, with Microsoft, uh, and it's basically an, an, a, a quick tool to get you up and running on, on the cloud. So what it means is if you were on a, a Barracuda website, you could click on the uh, Azure link and it will take you straight to the Azure marketplace. And if you effectively click uh, buy it now, whilst it's not buy it now, it's free of charge, you can turn on a, uh, a, a firewall for 90 days um, and play with it to your heart's content free of charge. So it's something we call cloud ready. Uh, it's just a tool there to help you experience it. Um, you can then work with, with Bytes to uh, spend more time configuring if you need to. And basically it's just a, a helping hand to start off your project. So it's a, it's a nice way of, of getting going um, very quickly. Some customers choose not to do that. They, they would like to work the project through and that's absolutely fine also. It's just a, a tool that if that's of, of use, you can do that. Okay, I'm just going to hand over very quickly to, to Farah. She's going to speak for a couple of slides and then we'll, we'll wrap this up for you. Sorry there. Hello, sorry. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Yeah. My name's Farah. I'm the National Account Manager for Bytes, and I just wanted to take a minute to highlight the importance of having an email security solution in place for those of you who are currently using or planning to migrate to Office 365. This is because today's organizations struggle to protect users and data with a threat landscape that evolves every day. Most of these attacks begin with emails and involve carefully planned ransomware and phishing campaigns aimed at exploiting users. Barracuda Essentials for Office 365 combines advanced technology that includes behavioral analytics and sandbox technologies to protect against zero hour targeted attacks, including malicious website links and ransomware. This 
this reassures our customers that their communications are safe at all times. Yeah, uh, Chris, can you go over to the next slide? Is that right? Thank you. Um, so as you can see, Barracuda Essentials for Office 365 blocks threats in real time. This is key, especially considering research shows that 93% of phishing emails are now ransomware. Therefore, it's vital that these threats never reach the company's mailbox. Barracuda's advanced threat protection is a hybrid solution that uses four layers that work together through machine learning to effectively tackle the threat. Signature, behavioral, and static analysis are the first three layers, which stop 95% of the bad stuff. For the remainder, a sandbox is in place to remotely detonate the threat. However, it doesn't stop there. Barracuda Essentials also includes archiving and backup for SharePoint and OneDrive that is centrally managed through our cloud portal. So if you're still not sure, we have a free email threat scanner that has been pulled together to identify an existing malicious threats to see what it picks up. It's non-intrusive and easy to use. So please contact either your account manager or myself today to give it a try. Thank you, Chris. Okay, thanks, Farah. So just wrapping this up now, I, I, um, I saw this uh, quote, which uh, you can obviously uh, read for yourself. And, it, and it, I think it sums up the, the presentation um, uh, excellently you know we've we've covered a lot lot there and i do appreciate sometimes going through statistics on a webinar can be tough um, but i wanted to get the message across and, and remind everyone of that 64 percent statistic there that um you know as long as you make sure you're protected right the cloud is a very good thing and we can absolutely um go forward on that that journey together securely um so personally, I'd like to thank uh, Amy and the team at Bytes for, for helping us uh, host this and obviously the Microsoft team that we've been working with there. And we're more than happy to, to, to take any of your questions or speak to you afterwards and work with you on your uh, project. I uh, put Farah's uh, details on this slide as well as the, the URL that I've mentioned a couple of times through this presentation. But with that, uh, I'll hand back to you, Amy, and say thank you very much. Brilliant, thanks so much, Chris. Um, so yes, as mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, if you do have any questions, there is just a questions box, um, which is just at the right hand side of your screen. So if you do have any, uh, just pop them in there and I'll read those out for Chris and the rest of the team. Um, alternatively, if you would like to um, submit any outside of the webinar, there's an email address, uh, tell me more at bytes.co.uk, um, so you can send us an email. OK, I'll just wait a couple of minutes to see if any come through. Okay, it doesn't actually look like we've got any questions today. Um, so thanks so much, Chris, for presenting and Farah as well. And thank you everyone for taking the time out of your day to join our webinar today. Um, so I'll send you all a link to the recording this afternoon anyway, um, if you want to forward it on to any of your colleagues or anything like that. Um, and there is a feedback form at the end. So if you would like any more information, please do pop that in there and one of our specialists will be in touch with you. Okay, so thank you everyone and enjoy the rest of your day.